welcome to another episode of the NRW Weekly Respawn, episode 7. It's your boy Marky Mark, as always, my co-host. Andrew Rowe. And of course, the brother man behind the camera. Derek Amana. There he is. Um, so, we hung out this weekend, so I know yep. what you've been playing. <laughs> yep. Beat Saber, Smash Bros, and Mario Kart. Oh yeah, that's yeah. all you need to play. That's all you need to play, that's exactly. All you need. Uh, so let's get on into the uh, Respawn Report. Hell yeah. Um, GameStop. Yeah. What is your history with GameStop? Um, so, I'm a Power Up Rewards member and Me all too. that kind of stuff. Me too. But there are definitely better avenues to sell there your are, games or are. get your games, especially with the online market. But yeah. that might be why GameStop is kind of in this predicament exactly. they're in right exactly. now. Exactly. So, uh, from a report from, I believe, last June, um, GameStop has been going through some financial issues, so they are looking for buyers, basically. Um, news broke, I want to say in the middle of last week, mm -hmm. that they do have two potential buyers. Now, they didn't name either of them, so it's kind of a wait and see, but it does look like in the next coming weeks, uh, possibly bleeding over into the middle of next month, February, GameStop might not be GameStop anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to see Funko Land come back. <laughs> or EB Games. Well, EB Games is still global, though. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Um, so yeah, GameStop will, uh, hopefully you don't buy my shit for three times less than you're going to sell it <laughs> yeah, anymore. Exactly. Um, I believe two of the organizations that are potential bidders for GameStop are Apollo Global Management and Sycamore Partners. Okay. Some private equity firms. Okay. So I didn't even know that they had let out that information. But oh, just, um, not the people guaranteed to get it, just some sure, companies right, bidding right, right okay. now. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um, what else we got going, Andrew? Uh, we got Bungie and Activision. Yes. The pairing that was surprising to a lot of people yeah. produced a few games that I enjoyed. Destiny. I mean, that Destiny. More that's comments, that's yeah. Like that's it. <laughs> it it, it kind of is. But <laughs> they are also in a predicament, <laughs> aren't they, Mark? Yeah. So. This actually is perfect timing for Bungie to be like, "Hey guys, we're gonna we're gonna head out." Yeah. Um, Activision is currently under investigation uh, for fraud, so yeah. you know, so we can't take away everything from Activision because they did, they they were the publisher, right? Mm -hmm. Where Bungie is your developer, so they helped with everything from. Like marketing, I want to say, I could be wrong on that. Um, to paying for the people that actually drive the games to the GameStop, yeah, where you the physical Copy. copies. So you know, yes, people have their issues with Activision, but they did a lot in the partnership with Bungie to help bring us uh, Destiny. Destiny. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Exactly. Um, an interesting tweet from Phil Spencer. Uh, head of Xbox. Yeah. He, um, I don't know exactly what it was, but saying something like he's very excited to see the future of Bungie. Yeah. And as we all know, Bungie used to be partnered with or owned by Microsoft, giving us Halo. Yes. Is yeah. it a partnership or? Um, it was more of just they kind of mained or. Yeah. It's kind of like how Square Enix was kind of more PlayStation right, a lot, right, and then exactly, now they jumped over exactly, to Xbox. And exactly. So we're you know we're definitely excited to see where uh, what happens to that release calendar that we had up here for uh, Destiny Two. I want to say three or four episodes ago. Mm. We're ex interested to see if that still happens and um, mm. what's going to happen with Destiny Three. Yeah. So, um, just a quick comment on that. Destiny's um, property by itself is actually going to be retained by Bungie. Yeah, that's right. So, in my opinion, good on them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Bungie exactly. will produce a better Destiny 3, and right. they're going to actually listen to everything that we ask. Because yeah. I think Activision was kind of stepping on their throat saying, hey, you need to make this game a certain way. Bungie's more of a, that's true. let us make our game and that's you'll true. give you something Halo quality. Again. Exactly. And now that they have Destiny still... I think Destiny 3 will be able to live up to that hype. Going back to what I was saying about the things that Activision did for Bungie and Destiny, they so the original 
uh, Destiny was console only. Mm -hmm. uh, PS4 and Xbox One, right? It was this current console generation, or did they start on 360? I believe PS3. I believe Destiny was always an Xbox. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in this current uh, console generation, so they n never or Destiny One didn't have a PC port. Not yeah, not initially. Right. So Activision was actually the one since they are partnered with Blizzard. Yeah. To um, who brought them to the Blizzard store? Yeah. So I would be interested to see. What happens with Destiny 2 on PC? Are they gonna mm. move possibly to the Epic Store with another game that did announce that they are really partnering sick. with the Epic Store? What game is that? Division 2. Uh, Bungie's has... on Division 2? No, no, no. Oh. Wait, what? <laughs> so. Activision was. Activision was on Blizzard, right? So that's why they have yeah, Call of Duty why... Black Ops. But. With the split, I don't think Destiny 3, I guess, we don't know if Destiny 2 is going to stay on there, but we don't know if Destiny 3 is going to be back on the Blizzard store, or the the former Battle.net, mm. what is it now, Blizzard app? Something yeah, like Blizzard that. app right now. But So they could be possibly going to the Epic Game Store, which is ramping up stuff. And are actually bringing, have just announced that Division 2, who mm. formerly with Steam, is now partnering up with uh, the Epic Game Store. Epic Game Store, yeah. yeah. So they're, you know, I'd be interested to see if they're trying to bring all these, like, um, lifestyle games, like you have Fortnite. You know True. that Fortnite fan base is devoted. They are on there yes. at least once a day. Yeah, all those 13 year olds <laughs> have to play that game. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, I'm. So I've kind of dropped off since the new year. Um, I'm playing Division 1, but I am hyped to get back into Division 2, so I would like to see if they can also secure Destiny 3, then a lot. my two like number one games right now would be playable from the same source. So that'd be cool. And it'll be a lot easier. A uh, lot easier, yeah. A lot of PC gamers mainly uh, have a lot of complaints about, oh, I gotta open up this door and then open up this door. Yeah. You can also just create a shortcut on your desktop. Yes. <laughs> like, it's really not that hard, guys. Mm. Um, anyway, moving along, we got, you know, speaking of Activision's fraud lawsuit. Yeah, there's we, some there's other legal some, stuff going on in the gaming stuff. industry. Yeah, this one hits a little home, or yeah. hits a little close to home for me, but go ahead. Um, so, recently, or I guess not so recently, but in, late, in the latest news, yeah. The Gearbox CEO, so Gearbox is the creator of Borderlands. Yep. Randy the Pitchford. C yep. Uh, Randy Pitchford was accused of siphoning over $12 million yeah. um, for his personal gain, and he also is being accused of owning child pornography. Yeah, apparently he left a USB with some of that child porn yeah. at uh, medieval times. Yeah, places. I mean... That's a whole nother story. I guess he was partying a little too much with Thor and some of our <laughs> King Arthur's and Camel in in Camelot, yeah. but not DC Camelot, but in like a Maybe weird, who knows? Yeah, who knows? In a weird way the um response that he gave right. is that someone is trying to blackmail him. Right. So he did actually take to Twitter uh and social media, um and just kind of put out general statements, I guess. Uh, one reads, The attacks made by my former co uh, friend and colleague have no basis in reality or law. He is simply trying to shake me down for money. We will win, but because lawsuits are pending, I can't comment as much as I'd like. I am shocked by his lies. Thank you for the love and support. Um, and then in a follow-up tweet in regards to the uh, child porn allegations, he says, As a father, I find crimes against children to be especially repugnant. repugnant sorry. Uh, it is very painful that a former friend and colleague would lie to try to associate me with such behavior in his own greed, in his own greedy pursuit of money. So, we could be looking at a new Gearbox CEO. Potentially. Potentially. Um, you know, even if things do swing in his favor and he gets cleared of all these, I still feel like he would be asked to step down just because 
his name is now kind of linked to the Top story. Yeah. More so, yeah. And I mean, twelve million dollars is a lot of money, even. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you know, and if I find out that that's why I haven't gotten Borderlands <laughs> Three yet, I'm gonna be really pissed. It's definitely a factor. Really <laughs> pissed. It's definitely a factor. Yeah. That's so I, I don't know. You got anything else to say on that? Um, as y'all can tell, I'm angry. Yeah. <laughs> Just other than Gearbox has filed for a grievance against uh, Mr. Pitchford, so that's kind of the latest legal action that's been taken so far in this case. Mm -hmm. It's a developing story, so we will continue to see where it goes, and we'll keep you guys updated on it. Yeah. So it's been mostly bad news that we've had for you guys mm -hmm. today, but we do have something fantastic for you. Yeah. Something I know. Andrew, who is our Marvel guy, yeah. would like to share with you. Yeah, 100%. Um, so, the Fantastic Four. We haven't seen too much of them in media, video games, or even in pop culture, but as of recently, uh, they just got their comic book back. Yes. And with the resurgence of, uh, I believe, Fox, is it Fox who owned them? Yeah. Fox was, and yeah, the Disney Fox. Mergel, um, merger, Fantastic Four's... PR is booming now. Yeah. Um, they're trying to bring back the first family. So, in, they should. yeah, yeah, they really should. And in Spider Man, the PS4 game, I don't know if any of you guys know, but Spider Man used to be a Fantastic Four member. Yep. And with all those facts coming together and trying to support the Fantastic Four, there's going to be some Fantastic Four content coming to you in that PS4 Spider Man game. Yeah, um, we don't exactly know what it is yet. Um, Insomniac did kind of just say in a tweet as well, something fantastic is coming to Marvel Spider-Man. Any guesses? Um, I'm thinking it's been said out there that it's, he's going to be able to get the alternate costume of Spidey in his Fantastic Four suit and a brown paper bag on his head. Yeah. One of my favorite costumes. It's been in Marvel vs. Capcom 2. It's, uh, oh, is it? Yeah, it's in Marvel vs. <laughs> okay, Capcom 2. That's one that. of his alt suits. Okay. Um, definitely something that would be really cool, but I think they might be adding something so, a little more fantastic than that. So, if y'all have played through uh, Marvel Spider-Man PS4, you will know that like the Avengers building is there, or Avengers Tower, the Avengers um, Sanctum Sanctorum. Yep. Uh, the Wakandan Embassy, yep. a, a bunch of other MCU. Nelson and Murdoch. <laughs> yep, exactly. Uh, Avocados at Law, the yeah. building is in there. Um, so a bunch of other MCU related things, uh, Easter eggs pop up around the city, but the Baxter building is nowhere to be found. Yes. So I have a feeling they will be bringing that as well. But these are all kind of just like fun little. Here's this, here's that. It's not really anything... It's cosmetic. It's, yeah, exactly. It's very it's cosmetic. cosmetic. Exactly. No story or what do you gameplay think are, additions. Yeah. What do you think are the chances we could get maybe a Human Torch cameo? A Thing cameo? I think Human Torch would be the easiest yeah. and best Fantastic Four member to include. Yeah, not only because of the shared history that Spider-Man and the Human and Torch right. have together. They exactly. are best friends in the comics. Yep. Um, to... Pull in uh, the Human Torch into the Spider-Man game wouldn't be too hard, considering how I saw they do Black Cat and how they yeah, I saw exactly. them do the villains. You don't really have to make him like a character or anything like that. You can you reuse maybe some of uh, Vulture's flying mechanics True. for Human Torch. True. Invisible Woman, the Thing, and Mister Fantastic. I think is a little more of a reach. Yeah. Human Torch. I think they they should include in. Just do like a Black Cat DLC type thing. Yeah, them. and like with um, that first, what was it, The City Never Sleeps or yeah, something? Yeah, that story arc that they had. The first it, DLC. The few, yeah, it just that three episodic or three episode DLC arc just wrapped up. So I'm sure they're planning something or could be working on Spider Man 2. Hopefully. Co op with Miles? Yes, that would be amazing. <laughs> well, this is all speculation, of course, on our part. Nothing is confirmed as of yet. Um, but we do have a couple uh, confirmed release dates for you. Yes, we Coming do. Coming up in the next week. Let's see here. We've got um, anything standing out to you? Um, notable? 
I do see here we have a game that uh, fans were worried if they were going to see it or not, but on January 15th, episode 3 of The, uh, the, Walking, the Dead. Walking Dead, the Telltale season finale, game. yeah, Telltale's The Walking Dead, uh, still not bitten, so The Walking Dead uh, comes out uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, January 15th. Um, anything else looking... Interesting to you? Oh, a game that I'm oh. pretty hyped for, actually. Uh, I haven't been playing my Switch as I'd like to yet, but a game that I always wanted to play. But So, my last Nintendo console before the Switch was the Super Nintendo, but I've always been interested in No More Heroes. Yeah, oh and yeah, that's yes. right. Yes, um, Travis Strikes Back. I believe is the title. Okay. Uh, or Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes, comes to Switch January 18th. Yeah. So that's another one that I would be hyped for. Yeah, and they're doing a little more of a top-down rather than the third-person yeah. perspective right. that No More Heroes usually right. uses as well. Yeah, that game looks awesome. Definitely. Um, the I, craziness of those storylines. For sure. I mean, the creator made Killer Are, Have you played? All that. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. know that. Have yeah, you played yeah, any yeah. of the uh, No More Hero games? So I never really had the yeah, Switch or same. the Wii Nintendo yeah, systems same. till the Switch, so I didn't have the chance yeah, to. Exactly. And I know it's been ported to, I think, PSP or PS Vita and oh, the okay. PC I didn't before. Know that either. But I just oh. haven't had the chance okay. yet. So there you go. Um, our notable releases for the week. Uh, the Walking Dead Episode 3, and Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes. And one more just for any of the classic gamers. Right. Um, we do have the, we spoke about it last episode, we have the remake of Omunisha Warlords. Oh, yeah. is coming out tomorrow, January 15th as well. Okay. If you haven't had the chance to play an Omunisha game, and you like more of that Ninja Gaiden, a little bit of that Devil May Cry, but not as crazy, more realistic yeah. fighting, check this game out. It's 1999. It's definitely something I would say. Just to let you know, it is a remake, though, so don't expect any enhanced gameplay or anything like that. And for nineteen ninety nine, you can't really you can't go wrong. wrong. You can't go wrong. Coming to everywhere you play games: PC, PS four, Xbox One, and Switch. So yeah. there you go. Definitely check it out. Um, I think that about does it for us today. You got anything to add on? Um, no, those are pretty much the big yeah. releases coming out next week. Is going to be huge. <laughs> We'll get into that next week. Yes. So, for today, I, as always, I'm your boy, Marky Mark. I'm Adrian Rowe. Derek Amana. Uh, this has been the NRW Weekly Respawn, where we run through all the gaming news of the past week and present it to you guys in a format. We're a little biased, but, you know, it is what it is. This is our show, not yours. Yes. But <laughs> if you want to make it yours, you can write in, like, subscribe, comment, share, you know, all that good stuff. And don't forget, for all things NEW... Keep it locked in right here to NRW. Peace, guys.